Hi, the fourth installment of Big Dave Summer Vacations, slideshow number four. This will be on glacial landforms and coastal landforms. So, on your canvas, I think I asked you, um, what are the two major types of glaciers? You're going to write down continental glaciers and alpine glaciers. So we only have two continental glaciers left in the world at this point. One is in Greenland and one is in Antarctica. This is the closest I've ever been to a continental glacier. I was flying to London. The pilot um, said, look down and you're going to see, see Greenland. The other type of glacier is an alpine glacier. So this is in uh, Alaska right here, the shot of that alpine glacier. This is the Juneau Ice Field. Uh, it's an ice cap that spawns 36 different glaciers. By the way, you guys, did you know what the capital of Alaska is? Funny joke, huh, Jackson? Ah, uh, uh, he liked that joke. Okay, this landform here is called a cirque. A cirque is a bowl shape or an amphitheater shaped depression that forms at the beginning of an alpine glacier. Okay, so I'm on the Leech Glacier, which is the largest glacier in the Alps. This thing stretches several miles, it's over a thousand feet thick. I was able to walk on it with a guy who tied herself together, right? And the guy in the front had a stick looking for crevasses under the snow drifts. Great experience. Okay, this is another view of the Elise Glacier in the, in the Alps, right? People come from around the world, they go inside the glacier, do ice carvings in there sometimes, of like Buddhas and the Forbidden City. Really, really amazing place. Okay, I'm in Canada, uh, the province of Alberta. That's the Athabasca Glacier. And I took students up on this thing. You have this bus with gigantic tires that goes up this road over here, and they take you out onto that glacier. Uh, I am in the Alps again on a train. I don't even know the name of this glacier. There were many of them. The glaciers carve U-shaped valleys. Water carves V, glaciers carve U. I'm in Switzerland here, and this glacier is retreating. What that means is the ice is melting away. The equilibrium point between solid and liquid changing, moving uphill as the planet apparently warms up. Oh, wow. This is a, uh, a cirque glacier. I'm in Alaska right here. This is a fjord down here, by the way. I'll explain that in a moment. All right. Oh, I am in, let's see here. I'm in Alaska, and this is a glacier that has been retreating here also. This is up near uh, Valdez, Alaska. Okay, this is a hanging glacier. I got this off the side of the, uh, off the uh, window of the airplane. Oh man, so I think I told you before, I, I, I lectured on cruise ships. And this is the Sawyer Glacier. So a smaller cruise ship would come in here, probably use a side prop and turn on a dime and come back out. A fjord is a, a glacial valley that's been flooded by the sea. It's kind of like Yosemite filled with water. They're narrow, but they're deep. But to give you some perspective, this is about 200 feet high right here, and the water goes down probably another 200, 250 feet. Just gorgeous stuff. Oh, man, look at these glaciers here. I'm in a fjord in Alaska again. These are tidewater glaciers that come down to the, uh, come down to the water. This stripe here is called a medial moraine. I'll talk about that in just a moment. All right, so this is Cabin. This is the Hubbard Glacier. This glacier is like 95 miles long. This one, I believe it's the largest glacier in North America, you know, Alpine Glacier, not counting what's in Greenland. But Glacier's Cap, that's where icebergs break off from the snout or the end of the glacier right here. So I was on the cruise ship lecture and had the camera in one hand. I, I told I had about 2,000 people on the deck, and I said, you want to see this Glacier Cap? Everybody yell as loud as you can. They all yell. And, Nothing happens, and I say, you really want to see this glacier cap? Tell the captain to, uh, to go ahead and blow the whistle. So he blows the whistle, nothing happens. Then a second later, sure enough, it, it calved. A big chunk came off the face, and I got this sequence of photos. All right, pretty amazing, right? Great little wave in the water. There you go. Well, it's kind of <laughs> moving around, talking at the same time. But that's probably 300 plus feet high, 350 feet high right there to give you an idea. Okay, so these are uh, icebergs that have calved off from the Portage Glacier over here and been blown across this lake here towards the visitor center. Okay, uh, icebergs don't last that long in Alaska because the water's relatively warm. They may last 24 to 48 hours, a lot of little ones. All right, okay, we're gonna have to uh, change some slide trays here real quick. Just bear with us, okay. There we go, so these are uh, crevasses, transverse crevasses that go across the glacier. The glacier goes over a bump. The top part of the ice is moving faster than the slower, and it can crack like that. Or you
we could get um, crevasses that go this way also if the glacier is moving at different speeds, right, within the same glacier. Again, right down the middle there, that's a medial moraine. I'll talk about those in a, again in a moment. But I'm on top of a glacier here. Uh, it was kind of weird. I was on a helicopter and uh, we landed on the glacier and they gave us like these uh, crampon things. They go on the bottom of your uh, shoes. You can walk around on the ice, but they're right up to those crevasses. Pretty impressive. There's another really beautiful one. I walked around, got a, got a shot of the blue glacial ice. Okay, I am in Switzerland again. This is a cirque, full shape depression. That's another cirque. There's actually no glaciers in there right now. If it is, it's a very, very small glacier right there. Okay, another cirque. This is uh, up in Alaska, bowl shaped depression. Ah, yeah, this is good stuff right here. Um, this is Mineral King. So I, I lived in Three Rivers for 20, 25 years, and about an hour away, up this incredible winding road, you get to Mineral King. And so this is Upper Monarch Lake. So this was a cirque that's now filled with water. I think, I think that's the best way to describe this. And a cirque filled with water is called a tarn, T-A-R-N, Tarn Lake. You find these up in the high Sierra, just some beautiful scenery. Okay, I'm up on a, probably Sawtooth Pass, somewhere in that area, back in Mineral Cave. That's Columbine Lake, that's a, that's a tarn. Look at the high Sierra, isn't that beautiful? Just gorgeous stuff. Ah, man, this is Sawtooth Peak. This is the hardest day hike I've ever been on in my life. I've, I've been up there twice. Um, it's only eight miles up, eight miles down, but it's a good 12 hours to do this. You start at 8,000 feet, you end up here at about 12.3, 12.2. This is called a horn. It's been carved out by a glacier. So you come up to the pass here, and it's a battle getting there, and it's another two, three hours from here. You go boulder scrambling up here uh, to the top. There's your daddy again at the top of Sawtooth Peak, right, sucking air big time at that, at that elevation. All right, this is uh, the real deal. This is the Matterhorn. This isn't the one at Disneyland. This is the one in Switzerland. So it's a horn that's been carved out by three or more glaciers. Okay, there's a horn in Glacier National Park in the state of Montana. And glaciers carve U-shaped valleys, Glacier National. Ah, uh, there it is, Yosomate, Yosemite. All right, nice U-shaped valley. Glaciers went through here probably three times through the valley itself over the last million years or so. Okay, uh, this is called a hanging valley. And this is in Switzerland. So you got to picture a big glacial valley down here. This was a tributary glacier that joined it, didn't cut as deeply as the, uh, the main glacial trough. Ah, beautiful hanging valley. This is uh, June Lake area, Eastern Sierra. Just beautiful hanging valley where the tributary glacier came and joined the big glacier down here. Oh, Radeville Fall, Yosemite, the Hanging Valley, water flowing through this Hanging Valley now. Okay, so this is a fjord. A fjord is a glacial valley that's now flooded by the sea. That's a tidewater glacier back there. This is in Alaska. Gorgeous stuff. Uh, Alaska, again, when George Vancouver sailed by here in the uh, 1700s, he suggested that the ice was all the way out here. That's how much this glacier has, has retreated. And you, 99% of glaciers on this planet are melting away, are retreating. That is, a, that is a gorgeous shot of a fjord right there on my way to the Sawyer Glacier. Okay, so these are meltwaters coming off of the glacier. Okay, and it forms a little tiny delta here. This is the rock flower, the glacial flower that helps give the water that aqua tint. This is where the rock flower meets the fresh water. Okay, this is a cross section of something called glacial outwash. Meltwater some glaciers lay down deposits. Deposits are all kind of the same size. When ice lays down deposits, the ice, the glacial carry rocks of varying sizes. When the ice melts, it drops them all, jumbled together. This is called till. This is a cross section of something called a moraine. Okay, in uh, eastern Washington, this is how far south the glaciers came. Right, all hummocky and bumpy. Right. This is called Till Plain. This was laid down by meltwaters to the south. That's called Outwash Plain. Yeah, that's a dirty, dirty glacier right there. Right? That's the middle of Alaska carrying lots of, lots of material. Okay, so this is a tidewater glacier. And when two glaciers join together, 
they form these medial moraines. As glaciers come downhill, they push some material off to the side, and other material drops in from the, the hillsides below, and it forms these lines in the middle of the glacier called medial moraines. Okay, so this is a John Muir Glacier in uh, Glacier Bay National Park up in Alaska. So this is a lateral moraine right here, and that thread there, and they join, and they form the stripe called the medial moraine. Here's another lateral, another lateral moraine. Okay, so this is cruise ship level John Muir Glacier. So the material that's right here and right here joins together and forms the stripe. This is the lateral moraine, and that's another one. The lateral moraine is like a linear ridge that's composed of till. Till is a glacial deposit, kind of jumbled together, unsorted by size. Hey, you can see this pretty well here. Here's the lateral moraine. The lateral moraine forms the stripe. Okay, a terminal moraine marks the furthest advance of a glacier. So uh, this is Jew Lake area. Uh, there may have been a terminal moraine down here at one point that's been breached by water now. Okay, uh, recessional moraine, I'm not gonna worry about too much. Go ahead, Jackson. Okay, this is a moraine going to hike across it on the ground, what they might look like a lateral moraine in the Sierra. Okay, so this is what the Eastern Sierra looks like when you come down Tayoga Pass on the east side. So the glacier came down the mountains like this and went right down there. That's the lateral moraine right there. So the glacier went, ooh, U-shape out, went in that direction. Let's not worry about that. Keep going. Keep going. I'm not worried about that. Ah, oh, Olmsted Point again. My spot. One of my many G spots, my geography spots. That's Lake Tanaya. Behind me would be Yosemite Valley from the north. These boulders were laid down by, by glaciers. They're called erratic boulders. Just gorgeous stuff. I won't worry about that, Jackson. Okay, coastal landforms. This won't take long at all. So this is called a sea stack. So it's an isolated outcrop of bedrock left standing after the cliff has been eroded back by wave action. This is near Palos Verdes. Okay, this is on the Big Sur Highway area. Uh, these are some beautiful sea stacks right here. Uh, Costa Rica, great sea stack, great warm water. Uh, you know this one, maybe. This is what Shell Beach. These are some of the sea stacks out there. Ah, uh, there's another shot. Shell Beach area, Pismo area. Okay, this, these are um, in Hana, on the island of Maui. So these are beautiful sea stacks, uh, basaltic rock, dark volcanic rock. Behind me are the Seven Pools, if you remember those, if you guys have been there. Uh, Anacap Island, off the coast of Ventura. It's beautiful sea stacks, great place to skin dives by a snorkel. This is a sea arch. If wave action cuts through a headland, you get a sea arch like this. And that's Anacapa Island also, Channel Islands. Okay, so this is another sea arch. These are erosional landforms created by wave action. Because I'm so good here, I'm in a kayak and I got a, a picture of a sea stack through a sea arch. Anacapa, again. All right, this is Cabo, if you've been there, the famous sea arch at Cabo San Lucas. Wave action cuts through the headland right here, creates that beautiful arch. Okay, this is uh, Kauai. I love Kauai. Just showing wave action against the headland. The waves beating away at the rock, eroding it away. Okay, this is where tide pools are formed on a wave cut bench. I'm not going to worry about it too much in the online class here. So, I do ask you, about waves when they begin to break. Waves begin to break when the water depth decreases to about one half of the, of the wave length. So when you see waves breaking way, way out, it's a gently sloping shoreline. When they're breaking onshore, usually it's a steep shoreline. Okay, that's a nice wave. Look at this. I think that, I think that brother's catching it right there, man. That's, whoa, that's a big wave right there. That's, uh, that's North Shore. Go ahead. Uh, you guys know this one, right? Uh, it's a sand spit. Sandbar connected to land at one end. Right? That's what a sand spit is. A sandbar connected to land at one end. More rock, more bay. Okay, there's a little loogie right there. That was in Lake Michigan, I believe. Okay, that's a tombolo. And I have a much better slide I gotta insert in here. But a sandbar connected a sea stack to the mainland is a tombolo. There's an artificial tombolo that connects more rock, more bay to the mainland. Okay, if the, if the sand spit grows across the mouth of an inlet, it's a bay mouth bar, 
I think the sand spit in Royal Bay would do that if you didn't dredge. Okay, this is where I grew up. This is down in Long Beach on the peninsula. Seal Beach is right over in the other direction. But uh, in the wintertime, there's lots of erosion. You can put a, a berm up here to protect the expensive houses. I didn't live in one of those, right? But this lifeguard station no longer there. I think it kind of bit the dust. Um, Seal Beach, where I lived for a while, this was, I was in school. This was the 1980s, late. And the beautiful wooden pier, big waves took out a portion of the pier. Right. Went into the parking lot, went into, into the houses, check this out, right? But I remember it was finals, and there was nothing that could keep Big Day from making his final. There you go. So this is the, uh, the end of slideshow number four. I hope you enjoyed all my slides. Go ahead and do your assignment and uh, turn it in. Thank you.